On this episode, we are literally doing nothing again. Yes, nothing changed. <laughs> Christian gets excited about numbers again. Aha! <laughs> and somehow the numbers lead to explosions. Yes. Yeah! Hi, I'm Christian, Advanced Rock Tutorial Editor. Last time around, we created a bit of a, kind of like a template for an editor. We kind of started working on template, but it's it's still very bare bones. It just loads a single file and it does load the, some, some sprite sheets as well. Um, but now what I want to do, let's put it in the background. So, so it, it, it loads a single file, a single variable uh, in that file called export data, just the string export data, it loads that in. Uh, today what I want to do is I want it to work with an array, which is the thing that will, will be the thing that the editor edits, it just edits an array. And those areas will, you know, will mean different things later on, different versions of the editor. But for now I want to create a template that can load in a two-dimensional array and write in a two-dimensional array back into a file. Something like this. All right, so let us get started right away. So first of all, I want to put an array into our uh, into our thing. So let's go 0 0.1.1.2.3, just like uh, some numbers. Um, there is a bit of an issue here. Uh, I mean, this is a string now with some numbers in here and we're gonna use the split function to split it into an array. I think that's better. I mean, we could have just put an array in here, something like this. That's possible but we know we're not gonna have this. Because I, there's an important thing that about the import feature that I didn't discuss, and that is this is not a way around the token limitation. This is not a feature to get around the token limitation. Uh, when the contents of this text test file, when the contents of the text file, when that gets pasted into your Pico 8 card, you will lose those tokens. Right now, if I select this, it says zero tokens. But once this is executed and the contents, this test equals something so forth, when that gets pasted in here, it, the, the code will look like this. And then you will have to pay those, those seven tokens. The code will not execute if you go over the token limit. If this, the stuff that you have in this test file if that pushes you over the token limit, over 8,100 whatever tokens, then your card will simply not run. So, so this is not a, oh, that's going, I'm gonna dump all my token heavy stuff into a text file and import it. That won't work, that won't run. There is other ways of doing this, but not, this is not the way. As I said, there's like a whole mindset of, of doing game development in PQ8, which is multi-carding. Uh, but it relies on the reload function that we have here, not on the include function, okay? So whatever we have in this text file in here, it would be good if this is already token optimized, especially this, because, you know, it's a lot of data. So we want to save a string that gets then split it into an array. But if you do it like this, we can do it like this, right? I'm going to save this, run this. We, ha we have now 0, 1, 2, 3, okay? Let's let's actually let's let's do not do the SPR anymore because it looks funky. Okay, and then we can we can run the split function on this, right? So we can do something like um, data equals split uh, test, right? We don't run the split function on this, but it's kind of like awkward. It's kind of awkward that we need to run the split on the data that we imported. Why not? Why not just make it part of the data in, in our text file, right? Like why not why not just write the split right in here? Seems like a no-brainer. Seems like a no-brainer. So I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna actually see what happens. I wonder what happens. Uh, right now we cannot write um, write this on the screen anymore because now uh, this data that we have in our in our text file now this has this is an array and we cannot just print it on the screen like this. So now what we have to do is we have to iterate through through this data. Let's just do this for i equals one hashtag data do 
and then BG print data square brackets i, right? We're just gonna grab, we're just gonna iterate through all of the data and grab each data and then just print on the screen. Data is nil. Oh, right, right, of course, of course. Here we're gonna just call it test. Like this. Okay, we have three. The problem is we are all drawing all of the numbers in the same place, so we want to maybe move things down a little bit. So let's go um, two plus seven times i. Uh, so the y value gets increased as we draw the next item onto the screen. So now we have like a table of items, good. Let's put some more spacing between them. Okay, zero, one, two, three. So that's our array that we have here, zero, one, one, two, three, drawn to the screen, that's good. Now this little, tiny little token saving measure that um, shout out to Whale Al, which suggested this, which I think is a good idea. And that is in Pico8 there's a, or like in Lua, there's like this thing where if you run a function, and that function accepts um, a, just a single st a string, like a quotation mark string as a parameter, you can actually leave out the quotations, uh, leave out the parentheses. Um, that will also execute. So we're gonna, we can just leave out, the, that's just save, say so I think one token, is it one token? I think it's one token. Yeah, so that will also execute and we're gonna take advantage of that, that's kind of nice. I wonder if, if you can leave out the space in here. Yeah, that also works, so that's good. All right, so now I want to write the export function. Later on, we're gonna have the export function for a multi-dimensional array, but for now, I want to write a simpler version of that. I want to write an export function for a one-dimensional array. Uh, for that, I want to do some little changes here. So um, I want later on the editor to maybe work with different names of different, like, different variable names, but I want the internal variables to always be the same. So that's why I was a bit, a bit hesitating here. I want to maybe create something like, how about we have a, a file name? We're gonna save the file name into a text file here at, at this point. We want to, because this is gonna be a template for multiple editors, right? So we want to maybe create like a place, uh, customize here. I'm gonna create a, a place where you can customize the editor to edit different types of data, different, <clears throat> different, uh, different arrays, uh, depending on what kind of editor this is. So I wanna create like a little place here where all this stuff is being defined. Uh, so the name of the text file that we are writing to. Uh, the, here's the name of the text file you are writing from. Here's the name of the text file you're writing to. Uh, the include statement doesn't accept a variable. You have to spell out text.txt. We cannot do like something include file. That doesn't work. So uh, yeah, we have to, um, but we want to maybe save the name of the uh, text file you're writing to into a text file. So later our export function can, uh, can use that. Uh, also, I want to have a um, variable called data. And we're gonna set that variable to test. In this case, test is the variable that we're getting from our file. And we're gonna just um, put it in the variable called data. So every time here in the editor we are working with something, we're always gonna be working with data. Uh, and so that's why here, for example, we're drawing things to the screen. I want to write the data to the screen. Right, let's save this and run this real quick just to see. Uh, it still works, okay, good. So now let us go to the, uh, the IO, to the export function. So we definitely want to keep this, um, this, uh, this print h statement at the end. We want to keep this around. We just want to maybe edit this local variable s. We want to dump all of the data <laughs> format it into a string, dump it all into S, and then write the, the S out. Oh, by the way, I just realized, yeah. So we're gonna also probably have our, our name, and we're gonna call it test, something like this. Um, because again, for the exporting purposes, we wanna make sure that the program knows what the name of the array is that we're supposed to write into our export file our name. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's write that into our, our string. So first we're gonna go our name, right? Because this is gonna be this, this test, oops, test, um, dot, dot, 
then we open up a string uh, equals split, right? And then we're gonna escape the quotation mark and then we're gonna close the spring, okay? And we also know that at the end, we're then gonna write the content inside the string and then we know that at the end, we're gonna go s equals s dot dot, start a new string, escape the quotation mark, we don't, we, because we are now we're talking about this, this year, right? Uh, we're gonna escape the quotation and then we're gonna close the string, okay? So now in here, all we need to do is to write these things into, into the string. So we're gonna go, we're gonna use the same thing that we used here when we're printing the data on the screen. We're just gonna look through all of the data. And we're gonna go s equals s dot dot. Now, there is actually a way to make this a bit shorter and I'm gonna use it just for now. Um, we're gonna, we can also go, um, so if you write something like this, right? This is the same thing. This is the same thing as this, okay? So we're gonna use the shorthand form. So uh, s dot dot equals um, data i. Um, there is a bit of a problem and that is we don't have the commas yet. We have to also add the commas and you would think that maybe just like, oh, and then add a comma afterwards. Uh, but the problem is like the uh, three, the last entry shouldn't have a comma at the end. Um, so that is a bit of an issue. I think something that works well is to do it other way around. So you only add a comma before the data that you're adding to the string. So um, you know, before you write the one, you add a comma. Before you write the two, you write a comma. Before you write the three, you add a comma. And you just don't add a comma when it's the first entry. So something like if i is greater than one then s dot dot equals comma that that is my my strategy fingers crossed save run again we need to find a way to we maybe should bring in the debug uh, the debug code from our main program in here so we can just debug like export worked uh, But for now, let's see if what uh, Notepad++ says yes Something has been changed now. Let's pay attention like a hawk to see if there has been any changes There have been no changes. It just wrote this exact same code in here So if you run this again, we're gonna have the exact code. Yes, nothing changed <laughs> But actually in this case it's good. We want if we make no changes to the to the underlying data, we want the code to be exporting the same stuff. That's good. Yeah, let us um, copy and paste uh, the debug stuff here. So this is the debug code from our main program. Uh, it basically loops through an array of, um, uh, just an array and just prints that array on the screen. Um, and we can then use this array for debugging purposes. We also want to create an empty array. And then when we export, I want debug one to be called exported. So now if we export, we know that it exported. Nice. Okay, so far so good. So now it, this works with, with a one dimensional array and now I want it to work with a two dimensional array. And there is a little thing that we need to add for that. I, and that is I want to copy and paste our um, split to D function in here. So this is important because um, this is gonna be the same function that splits a string into the two dimensional array in our main program and just copied the same stuff from our main program in here. It's just a function that, you know, splits uh, a string by pipes into an array and then each entry in that array gets split further into an array. So we get an array of arrays um, from a single string. Uh, let us use this in here. So we're gonna uh, go use split 2D and then we're gonna use a pipe three, four, uh, three, four, five, six, something like this, right? I'm gonna save this. Let's make it a bit bigger. So. 
So this should be a, uh, an, the, this is going to be one array and this is going to be another array. And so it's going to be an array that contains two arrays and each array will contain four entries. Right, so now we're including the split, split 2D. Uh, I want to now draw the data to the screen. So for J, so we're going to put a loop inside a loop equals hashtag data I and uh, I J. Um, this won't quite work. This won't quite work because um, I'm going to run this and I'm going to, ooh, ah, there's a do missing. Yeah, uh, it, this doesn't work because we are, again, we are printing them on top of each other. <clears throat> so I'm going to add here a plus five multiplied by J. So something like this, even more, six multiplied by J. Okay, so now this is our array, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three. 0, 1, 2, 3, and then 3, 4, 5, 6, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so now this stuff needs to be exported. Oh, by the way, I just wanted to show you. So if I put this include here at the beginning, again, it doesn't work because it doesn't know split 2D at this point. It only learns about split 2D once we start running uh, init function. Okay, back to the export function. Now we want to loop through all of the data. So again, we're going to do basically the same thing. Um, for j equals one to hashtag data square brackets i do and this. Right, now we need to be really careful. Now we need to be really careful. Um, so now we need to insert pipes between the arrays and the commas between the entries in, inside the array, so that's a bit of a, a bit of a problem here. But it's just gonna just gonna have to do two versions of the same code basically. So it's like if it's the first array, we don't add a pipe. But if it's the second array and all subsequent arrays, before we write an array to the string, we add a pipe. This character pipe, and then we write the array to the to the thing. And then again, if this is the first entry inside the array, this i has to be turned into j. If it's the first entry in the array, we don't add a comma, but otherwise we always add a comma. And then, and then that's it. That should be it, hopefully. Oh, very important thing. Uh, now we're not running the split function. Now we're running the split 2D function. Okay, let's save. Let's export. Oh, okay. <laughs> I got I got scared for a second there. Um, now our data is two dimensional, so we have to do i j. Again. Uh, hey! Okay. Okay. So it exported. Let's see if if this actually looks okay. Watching if there's any major changes. There are no changes. We did it. Ha! Okay. So I'm. I'm actually now interested if, if this will actually work with the actual data that we are having here. So I've just copied something in our, our, our array um, and I'm going to put it in here. You see, this is the my SPR from our program. This is the sprite stuff that we already have, that we had so far. This whole bunch of numbers, right? And so I want to see if this, if we can import this into our editor. So let me save this real quick. Now we, did, we need to do some uh, small changes. Um, we're gonna call this um, here and customize here a thing. We're gonna the file is still gonna be test.txt, but our name is gonna be my SP SPR. Otherwise, everything is gonna be stay the same, right? We're gonna save this. We're gonna run this. Did not work. Ah, it didn't work because here we also have to edit this part here. <laughs> it's working. Uh, there's a little, uh, a little bit of a problem. The data overlaps a little bit. You can see that because uh, previously our arrays were very simple. We had uh, one digit characters, one digit numbers in each entry. But now we have multiple digit characters 
uh, numbers. So we might want to um, you know separate them a little bit more. Um, let's go 12. Yeah, see, see, this is this is our stuff. Maybe even more 18. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so now this is our table. And we draw that table to the screen. Now the question mark is now if we can actually export this. Uh, this is scary. Okay, export. It did export. Let's see if this works. It worked. It looks exactly the same. Nothing changed. <laughs> okay, this is important now. So now that this works, we can go to our couch map. Uh, well, let us let us save this. By the way, it says flattened includes. I'm not sure why it said flattened includes now, but whenever it says flattened includes, that means that whatever it's saved, um, it also already included a text file in, into it. I'm not sure why it's saying this. It should be saying this only if you save it to um, PNG version. Uh, Pico 8 versions should, usually don't include the includes. So you know, whenever you send somebody a, Pico, a, a P8 version of your program and it in, includes some stuff, you need to also send the files that it includes. Uh, I think this is a bug. I think it shouldn't include the includes. Um, but yeah, you guys let me know. Um, I'm gonna uh, load our, our couch map. There's our couch map. And now you can see. Now you can see, we can just remove all of this stuff. This stuff can be removed, but also Bam! And now we can go include test.txt. Will that just work? Of course not. <laughs> what, what, what happened? Oh, it's text. <laughs> it's test.txt. Okay. But at least we know what it looks like when it doesn't work, right? Oh no. Did I break something? Oh, I know what the problem is. I think the version that I had here, the version I had in it, that was an old version. Let's undo this real quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because here we had the splash stuff, right? The splash from the previous episode. That's not part of this function here. So uh, so that, that's why it's created some, some bugs here. But actually it's a good opportunity because you know, if you wanted to create this uh, split 2D version of this long array, you know, previously it took quite a while to get there, right? Um, but now we can do it very easily. You can see, you're gonna copy this. Uh, we're gonna load editor. No, we're not gonna save this. Oh, what? Load editor, yes. Okay, so <laughs> we're gonna temporarily paste this stuff in here. I'm gonna say data equals this. We're gonna save this. We're gonna run this. This is the new data that includes the splashes and so forth. Now we're gonna export. And now we can see, yeah, there's a whole bunch of additional data that was added to our exported version. Ha ha. Now we can delete this and save this. And now we can load cow shmup. And now we run it. Yes, yes, yes. Yes! I am extremely happy. Okay, now that I this is done, I want to do small, so, some small changes. I don't like the test.txt, so let's call this shmup underscore my sp, my sp, my spr. Um, just so, because now we're gonna turn this into our production file and this is gonna be our production file. Now this file includes our my spr stuff and now this is no longer part of, um, of the couch map. And now in the couch map, instead of the text uh, test.txt, we're gonna load in shmup my spr. Just making sure that it works. It works perfect. Uh, by the way, uh, my my frame rate is, is redlining, but I think it's due to all the other stuff I'm running in the background right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right, let's load the editor. 
And again, we have to customize this. This is going to be shmup my SPR, shmup my SPR, and then my SPR. Let's run this real quick just to make sure. Yes, it's working. Perfect. And then here inside this, uh, we're not going to open this anymore. Instead, I want to load this in here. Good. All right, so now that we closed the export loop, we integrated our editor into the pipeline of our stuff. Now, I want to actually start working on the UI of the editor. We have to actually think of how we want to edit things. We have to come up with some idea, but that's something we're gonna deal with, you guessed it, in the doggy zone. Yes, 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 in the doggy zone. So um, I, I decided to make a break here, even though the episode was pretty short, but I think we made a, like, a major breakthrough and the next step is something that actually requires us to do some thinking. As I said, this editor is not necessarily gonna be turned into a, the sprite editor immediately. I just first want to create like a bit of a framework. I want to create some stuff that we can use later to build all sorts of editors. And I think a good starting point is to basically recreate Excel. That's right, the sprite sheet program Excel. I want to, because basically that's what we're doing right here. We just like have a bunch of numbers on the screen and I want to be able to edit these numbers. And there's gonna be two challenges for this doggy zone. First is, I, those, we have some numbers on the screen, we have a table, but this is not a nice looking table. I want you to create a nice looking table. I want you to, you know, format the numbers, make sure that the background box is always the same size so that everything is nice and peachy and ordered. And as an additional thing, I also want you to be able to, with a cursor keys, to select different entries in a table. I want you to like use the cursor keys to navigate with maybe like a cursor to a certain position. That's first task. The second task, and that's kind of like on top of that, is I want you to find out ways to edit the actual values. I mean, you know, you have a cursor, you go to a number, you press a button, and then what you do next? Like, what is the next thing? How do you edit the number? There's easy ways of doing this. Maybe there's like, you just go up and down to increase or decrease the number. But the really, really difficult stuff is to make it so that you type in a number. That's going to be a really tough one, but that's something that we're going to do on the next episode. Yes, but for now, let's talk about the things that I talk about uh, at the end of each episode. And that's going to be a big thank you to all the people who are supporting me at Coffee. Thank you so much for making this show possible. And if you're not supporting me yet, you can do so at coffee.com slash lazydevs. Now, uh, on this episode, I also want to do another shout out to another Actane video. There's been a lot of Actane stuff videos that just came out and it's incredible stuff that Actane is delivering on his channel. And I definitely want to give it an additional focus here because Actane did a round uh, table discussion with a bunch of uh, uh, shmup indie devs. It's called the Indie Dev Cast, The Art of Selling an Indie Shmup. And he invited a bunch of indie devs, uh, among them uh, the developers of Shieldmade MX, and uh, interviewed them about you know, how they're making their games and how they're selling their games, their thoughts about you know, how to make shmup these days. It is an incredible round table discussion and you definitely should check it out. And I wanted to give this specific video, you know, the extra space in here. Go and check out Actane's Indie Devcast. Right, 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 for now, we are getting there. We have a fully working export import thing happening with our editor, but now we're gonna get into the difficult stuff, which is gonna be, you know, the UI stuff. We're gonna recreate Excel in PQ8. See you next time around, guys. Bye bye.